Hello. In this video, we continue our discussions of Mars tri-level approach, and we are going to discuss level two, algorithm and representation. So, on level one, remember that's the level of computational level, as we called it, and that is the more abstract level, the level at which we define the task that is being performed. And to do that, we respond to the question, well, what is the function that is being computed? Then, once we more or less have a handle on that, we have another question, which is, how do we compute that function? So we need to specify a definite method by which that function is computed. And this method is going to be defined at the level of algorithm and representation, also called level two. You'll see that the word process occurs in Mars discussion. And it basically means simply the application of operations of our representations. And here, our representation is any token or anything that can be computationally manipulated. So any item over which computational operations can be defined it can be, again, a, a data structure, uh, some sort of token. Well, the kind of process that he has in mind is the notion of an algorithm. Another thing that is very important is that the relationship between what we find at level one, which is functions, and what we find at level two, which is algorithms, is one to many. That is, to any function that corresponds more than one algorithm, usually. So take this function, y is x squared minus 1, and is defined by this set of pairings. To 1, there corresponds 0, 2 is mapped to 3, 3 is mapped to 8, etc. So this is just one function, but there can be more than one algorithm for computing this function. For instance, one algorithm can be square x then subtract 1 to the result of step 1. That is going to give you that mapping. Another one is, well, subtract 1 from x, then add 1 to x, and multiply the result of step 1 times the result of step 2. And so you see that at level 1, we have that, say, this mapping from 5 to 24, but we can arrive from that input to that output through many, through many routes. One is the first algorithm, the only one is the other algorithm, so again, this, in this first one takes two steps. The second one, again, takes three steps, so there are different algorithms, but they compute exactly the same function. At the functional level, they are equivalent. At the level of input-output, they are equivalent. And at the level of um, implementation, we also have a one-to-many relationship. Namely, this algorithm one could be implemented physically by one process, I don't know, electronically, or perhaps by uh, uh, mechanically by a machine made out of a set of uh, cans, and could be implemented biologically, right, by a brain. And so this is general, that between any level, uh, levels below it, it's going to be a one-to-many relation. Okay. Another thing is that the algorithmic level also has to make explicit a kind of representation. One has to proceed in some way. We have to choose a representation for the entities that the process manipulates. What are the representation? What are the units that are going to be manipulated by the algorithm? And so, again, just to recap, this algorithmic level is the second level of analysis and it's going to involve first a representation for the input and the output of the process, as well as an algorithm by which the transformation may be accomplished. Those are the two main pillars of level two. Why don't we talk about representation? Well, it's just a formal system that makes explicit certain types of information. And we're going to specify how the system uh, manipulates it, how it operates with it. Think about notations for representing numbers. And going back to our example of addition, so you have decimal representation, you have binary representation, you have Roman numerals. Those are different kinds of representation. And the kind of representation that we're going to use depends on the task and depends on how we're going to accomplish the task. If our task is simply to enumerate, perhaps Roman numerals is going to do fine. But if we're going to perform any arithmetical task, Roman numerals are not going to do the job. We're going to use decimal or binary or any other similar one. So, for instance, we can use Arabic numerals in base 10. And so we're going to represent 37 in this way. 
Well, this description is gonna is gonna make explicit the numbers, the composition into powers of ten, and it's something that are usual uh, algorithms for adding and for subtracting and for multiplying and dividing exploit. Or we can use in you know, other tasks binary representations, string of symbols drawn from zero to one, and this is gonna make explicit the numbers, the composition into powers of two. And well, we have a uh, thirty-seven, which really is not positional. And so there are several algorithms for carrying out the same process as we saw. And each algorithm is going to have its advantages and disadvantages. As we know, how the information is represented can greatly affect how easy it is to do different things with it. Doing addition with uh, Roman numerals is going to be really hard. Also, it is going to be constrained both from above and from below by the task and the available hardware. If a given representation is very hard to in, or inefficient to implement biologically or, or electronically or physically, it's probably not going to be your choice. And so the computational theory then is also going to be important for the algorithmic level, because an algorithm we have to has to be understood by knowing what the computational problem is. And it's better, Mar is going to say, if instead of going directly to try to study the algorithms, let's see first of all what task what function is being is being computed. And another thing that he says is that to understand perception by studying only neurons is to try to understand birth light by studying only feathers. Cannot be done, right? You have to understand the problem of flight. You have to understand aerodynamics. You have to understand uh, all sorts of issues to see how, what the role that feathers are playing out in flight. Well, the same, Mar says, goes to the study of computation of the brain before studying vision by, by analyzing the neurons and the composition, let's see, well, what computational job are those neurons trying to complete? And that takes us to the important level of implementation.